Hi everyone, I'm Sandy, and this is Untame Your Soul and Unleash Your Unlimited Abundance. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about uh, mud <laughs> and about, you know, that mucky mire that sometimes we feel like we get stuck in. Um, today I was outside um, because we had a, a huge mud situation. So, um, hi. Hey, Golden Hawk. Um, so I'll give a, a second or two. I see people are popping on here before I start my story, as usual. Make sure you say hi so I can know you're here. Let me know you're here. It's a good story tonight, you guys. It's very good. I switched my camera around, too, so that's why I don't know where to look. <laughs> hi, Thane. How are you? Did you get to draw any more? I love what you posted. Hi, Karen. It's good to see you. Hi, Yvonne. Okay, well, I'm gonna start. So yeah, mud. Um, I spent all day outside in the mud, helping my husband repair a broken well line so we could restore water flow to our house. With muck boots, and the right mindset, I found myself deep in muddy clay for hours. It wasn't how I intended to spend my day, but it was my day nonetheless. Life happens, curveballs, right? Um, so my point is, you know, you can either deal with the mud, knowing that it's only temporary, or you can get stuck in the muck, because you convince yourself there's no way out. So as I'm standing there, you know, ankle deep in this red, thick clay mud, um, it reminded me of a story that I really, really enjoy. And it's a story about a Thai Buddha statue. And you probably have heard this one before, but it's worth a repeat. And if you've never heard this before, um, definitely worth a listen. In the early 19th century, there was a 12 foot tall Buddha statue that was made of, of mud and plaster. Um, it was carefully painted. It was decorated with bits of colored glass, um, definitely loved. And it was relocated from a neglected and abandoned temple in Thailand um, to a minor temple, another place in Thailand, in Bangkok. Yeah, it was beautiful, you know, but it was generally considered valueless. And it sat there for over 100 years. Well, in the 1930s, the temple where the mud Buddha resided, it was abandoned. And the statue was moved to another temple in Bangkok. However, that modest temple didn't have any room for that huge statue inside. So since it was made of mud plaster, they couldn't just leave it out in the rain. That would destroy it. So it was housed under a simple tin roof and stayed there for the next 20 years. In 1957, plans were made to relocate the temple. You know, they wanted to make room for the development of a highway through Bangkok, you know, moving on and moving up, right? So the statue had to be moved again. The tin shelter was torn down. They brought in a crane and they strapped it all up. And as soon as they lifted it from its resting place, it began to rain really heavily. And they worried about the rain damaging the statue. So they started to rush. And you know what happens when you rush. So one of the ropes broke and the statue fell. It fell right into the mud. The construction crew decided to wait till the next day to try to move the heavy statue again. And they covered the plaster statue with a tarp. Well, it was still raining and still storming. So a monk volunteered to keep watch over the statue to make sure the tarp stayed on overnight and didn't blow away in the rain and the wind. So all night the storm challenged the monk and he kept the tarp in place the best he could until he was exhausted and he finally fell asleep. He was so tired, he slept through the rain and you know, he had a dream about Buddha, that he was divine, that it was very precious. The, re the dream was so vivid and so profound. So when he wakes up, you know, he's like, oh, you know, I, I slept and, and the statue is ruined because of me. You know, he was panicking. Um, while he was sleeping, the tarp was gone. It blew away. 
And the monk was totally distraught, realizing that he was responsible for the ruin of this divine statue. So he kind of just stood there helplessly watching the rain wash away all the paint. And the sky lit up with a stroke of lightning. And that moment, he looked at the statue and he saw a brilliant yellow glint shine from beneath that mud. So he looked closer and he saw that when the Buddha had fallen, the plaster had cracked. The rain had been washing over the split and it widened the crack along the surface. The monk began to push away the mud, revealing a miraculous sight. Under the painted mud was the gleam of gold. He ran to wake the other monks and they all came out running and they cleared all the mud away. And under this mud plaster, they found a massive solid gold statue of Buddha. True story, look it up. Historians, you know, they thought that several hundred years earlier, you know, before the monks discovery, the Burmese army was about to invade Thailand. Then it was called Siam, not Thailand. But the Siamese monks, realizing that their, their country would soon be attacked, they covered their precious golden Buddha with an outer covering of clay to keep it from being looted. So they were disguising their Buddha. Um, and there's a, there's a statue, um, there's a, a place you can go now that is um, where you can visit this statue. And they actually have chunks of the clay covering that were you know, that were applied to hide the gold of the statue. So um, the Siamese monks realized their country was going to be attacked and they were very, very worried about their prized possession. So in order to keep their treasure from being looted by the Burmese army, they covered it in a thick layer of clay, eight to 12 inches thick in some places. And unfortunately, the Burmese army slaughtered all the Siamese monks. So their secret died with them. And the Buddha remained intact under that mud plaster until that fateful day in 1957 when construction crews rushed and had it slip. So just, just think about that. Over the years that statue existed, more mud was added, more paint was added until it just kind of seemed crude and worthless. But today, that solid gold Buddha sits in the temple of Wat Tramit in Bangkok, Thailand. It's 5.5 tons of solid gold. It's the largest solid gold statue in the world. And I think at last value, it was around 200 million something, probably more than that now. But I told you the story for a reason. You know, as I was out stuck in my own muck, literally today, um, you know, it popped into my head and I wanted to say, you know, throughout our lives, we pile on layer after layer after layer of clay over our own golden Buddha. And the heaviest layer of clay, the one that's, that's the thickest and the most difficult to remove is the one we apply to ourselves. It's our limited thinking. It's our unconscious conditioning. The other layers of clay, you know, they get added from external influences like parents, schools, teachers, bosses, co-workers, society, the media, church, the government, corporations. You know, I could make this list go on forever. Eventually, our clay shell becomes so thick that we forget that our very own golden Buddha is there. You're probably thinking... So, how do I find my golden Buddha? What's my higher purpose in this life? Well, you already know it. All we need to do is start chipping away at that clay. We need to start rediscovering those things that you were passionate about as you grew up. We'll reconnect with why we first went into our profession or why we first went into that job we really, really loved. We'll recall times when we were in the magic flow and, you know, time stood still. It went so fast, it was like over like that. You know, we'll keep chipping away layer by layer, no matter how thick that clay is painted on you, until you gleam again. I would love to help you rediscover your life's true purpose. We have many options. 
um, I can do a one-on-one -on -one exclusive program with you and I have other options up to group courses that are a day or two long up to several months long and basically it's choosing what's right for you with the work that you need to do and I would be honored to talk with you about your path and how I can help you help you find that shine again help you chip away all of those layers and and let your real true purpose come out so that was really my intention today is just to share that golden Buddha story with you um, to remember that no matter how deep in the muck and the mire you think you are or how stuck you think you might be you're never really that stuck you can chip away those layers you can reveal your true self you can find your purpose and your path and it's a lot easier than you think especially with the right guidance so um, let me check over here for questions before I go hi oh hey Dina and Karen okay cool yes golden hawk I expected a different mud um, yes yeah you know you you do find it by being true to yourself um, but that's something where people are they're afraid that fear comes up you know every time somebody criticizes a choice you make layer of clay every time somebody says that you're doing something wrong or that your dreams are silly or dumb another layer of clay right anytime somebody tells you that you can't another layer of clay so we become so conditioned over our lifetimes that it becomes harder and harder and harder to take all of these layers off so um, that's sometimes when you need to reach out for help and have someone help you chip away um, have someone hold space for you because it's not an easy process um, it can be quite painful um, you know, letting go of, of things, helping your mind shift to where it needs to be in order to show you your true path and your true potential. So, um, oh my gosh, yes, Thane, good point. Um, yeah, going through and breaking your own lies to yourself. One of my courses that I, I do, it's extremely powerful and it's about fear um, and forgiveness. And I teach you how to forgive yourself that's that's something that people are like oh yeah okay well I could but I mean like on a deep 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 level really forgive yourself because you know it's it's kind of like stories you all want to be the hero of a story right I mean, think about every story you've ever read or every movie you've ever watched you know you have a, a conflict Okay, then you introduce the characters that are going to try to solve that conflict. Okay, and then you know one of those characters has a choice to make. And that choice is made and it's either you know great news for that character or that their downfall. Um, but we all want to be that hero in the story, right? Well, we are. We're in our own story and we're our own hero except people try to tell us we're not. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you guys get it. You really get it. Um, it's a difficult process. Like I said, if you want help, guidance, um, someone to hold space for you, just reach out to me. You can private message me, and we can set up a time for a conversation, and I can tell you a little bit more detail about how I can help you. And... Um, that's pretty much all I have for tonight. So I'm going to take my um, tired body and do some self-care because um, digging wet, heavy clay is very hard. So especially, you know, when you're doing it by hand. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. I really appreciate you being here. And um, love and light to you all. Good night. <laughs>